And when you come from my background, you know, in terms of being a foster kid, and um, I never wore it on my show. People never knew. You know, for years, people out here never knew. Because I, I, I don't believe that my bad day is your issue. Mm -hmm. or my life is your issue. Mm -hmm. So I always believe that when people, you know, and I'm, I want to apologize, but I, I, I know there's mental health, but I'm really hard on mental health because mm -hmm. I know you have to make a decision. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's like a Kobe. Right. You know right. what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so we need people like Chris. You know what I mean? Really, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. So what it was is that when I was on stage, so here's, that's a great question. So here's my background, and this is the reason. So I was a track dude in, in junior high school and in high school. I, I could have got a partial scholarship to go to Eastern, Eastern Michigan in Italy. I just I turned it down. Then I went, then I got my master's in computer animation. I didn't pursue it. Mm. Then I went to Golden Gloves back to back, got a fight down at Shipway Linda's gym. They were looking at me. It's going to fight. So what happened was it was three incidents I didn't push through, mm -hmm. and I said this. You know, that's a great question. And I said one night I was like, "Damn, you know, how many times you gonna give up on? You know, how many times you gonna? You ever, you ever see that movie, A uh, Perfect Storm? Mm -hmm. yeah. You remember this? I always remember the scene. I thought people remember this. Remember when the boat? They saw the they saw the sun mm -hmm. and they like we just get over this tidal wave we gonna be good and they got right to the top and it didn't, didn't, it didn't make it and it was a time when it, I went on stage one night and um, I have a, a, a speech impediment sometimes I have a list so that was also something I was always conscious of because I would go on stage and. And if I messed up, people would go, da da da, and then all these I'm like, oh shit, they got me. You know what I mean? So I would, I would, that controlled me. It really, you know, really stopped me from pursuing. And then what happened was um, I had an opportunity to, you know, really go home and just say, what are you gonna do? Mm -hmm. You can't keep, you know, you can't keep quitting. Mm -hmm. And I think the turning point of my comedy career, and then I'll give it to Chris, is, I was hosting, I was one of the co-hosts at Fat Tuesday back in the day, if you remember that. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a chance to host one night because Guy got sick. So no one had really seen me. I was always the warm-up dude. I was always five minutes on. I don't know if you remember that back in the day. But, but yeah, I remember yeah. that too. And um, I was always the warm-up person. I did five minutes and I would get off stage. And so this one night he couldn't host and I had to host. Mm -hmm. and this was, at one time we were the biggest night in the country in comedy. And I went on stage and I was just hosting the band. People were dying. And then after the show, um, Herb came to me and said, Man, you funny. Right. <laughs> you know, like, you, you, you yeah, funny, And funny. then the audience, LA kind of, embraced room, right? Yeah. LA embraced me. Mm -hmm. Because the fear factor was when you come into another city and guys like you guys that know these dudes, you know, Fleep is good at the door. Ah, you know, Fleep. Fleep is held back by everybody. He he did, yeah, he he so, it was actually yeah. Gino that was holding it's everybody. Still, was it Gino? Yeah. Was it Gino? It's still, of course, you know. Okay. 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 I'll mess with you, Fleep. I'll, I'll mess with you. But what I'm saying is that it, it, it all comes into play because you want to be somebody, you want to work at it, but you don't want to give up. So that was my motivation not to give up. When I had bad shows, I would go home and just talk to myself and go, mm -hmm. come on, Dan, you got you to do this. So that's where that comes from. And, and let, me, let me just tap in real fast on what these gentlemen are saying. I think that so you guys can kind of understand, you know, we, we've created kind of like a, I, I always like to say, you know, uh, white folks have country clubs. <laughs> okay, we don't have country clubs. So we gather at the hot spots in town. And at those hot spots in town, you find a lot of influencers and you find people who are, you know, like, like minds and people who are doing stuff. So we try to create a, a, a social environment where upperly mobile uh, urban lifestylers come and, and hang out. And through those places, you get people like, Chris may show up or this guy may show up. So I think that just to give you guys an overall view of like where he where he said that like, you know, these clubs actually help motivate his whole 
spirit to take him to the level where he's where he's at right now. So, all right, Dr. Chris.